Hey guys, Isabel here. Welcome back to Reeled In. Today we are talking about the new Star Wars Visions anime series. With me today I have my friend Chris who is my anime expert and he will be joining me to talk about this series and filling in all of the knowledge gaps that I don't have. So let's talk about episode one. Just that I feel like this is more like a sketch kind of style instead of like like it's like CGI or computer animated. I feel like it was a lot more like mm-hmm. put like they composited like sketches together for this one. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. It's like a good bit of like a CGI, I guess you could say in a sense, along with the uh, with like you said with black and white. Um, I did like it though, and with the difference with the uh, with the lightsabers, a lot. Of, I know a lot of these like this whole series itself was focusing strictly on like Jedi and Sith. Really, it wasn't really like a world building thing. It was more just like specifically those two entities right. in the universe. Um, but honestly, this, it was the first time I honestly have seen something like that before, like okay. with all the, um, it was, it was actually my first time, first time experiencing that in particular, cause nothing, I just, I'm, I'm used to CGI and stuff like that, but I wasn't used to like the black and white aspect mm-hmm. of it. So it was definitely different. And I did like how they did that though, because of the, um, I think that was like one of their best episodes, honestly, I like did they like came the out line. strong. Me too. Me too. <laughs> How did you feel about the uh, about the light, the, the difference with the difference of that umbrella lightsaber on the first episode? How did you feel about that? Um, well, I thought it was interesting. Like I'd never seen that before because, you know, especially now they come up with like so many different like lightsaber or like designs. But I feel like it kind of um, incorporated a little bit of like the like Japanese culture, which is something I liked a lot about the series is that not only was it Star Wars, but it was like a Japanese version of Star Wars. So I feel like that's like, you know, these like noble ladies in like ancient Japan, they have their like parasols kind of thing. So I feel like that's kind of like Mm -hmm. what it was. Like that's her like, like that's her status, her symbol of status basically with the parasol. But then she can- With the umbrella and everything else. Yeah, but then she can pull it out and it's just like a regular sword when she needs to do like battles. I agree. I mean, it's, it's definitely it was definitely different. I could definitely see what you what you mean about the um, about the Japanese kind of um, style with mm-hmm. the uh, with the umbrella, because that's also I know that's the thing that a lot of Japanese people like to uh, like to do with they're doing like a like a sort of not really ceremony, but more like a like you said, like a status thing, because a lot of women definitely do uh, carry around umbrellas that are like designed well. And mm-hmm. so that could be definitely a good comparison between the two. Right. So I definitely, definitely agree on that one. I mean, and it's something I also found interesting about this episode is usually in most Star Wars like shows and stories, we see like a Jedi sort of turn to the dark side and I, like, we don't get like, cause like the only like con I think with like shorter like episodes is that we don't really get to see like a lot of background. So mm-hmm. but I, I was just thought it was interesting that like this was a story of like a dark side user sort of like taking a step towards the light in a way Mm -hmm. i was thinking of him as like a as like a rogue sith in the sense he wasn't really a sith but he's more Mm -hmm. like a like a rogue kind of thing maybe he picked up the sword off of somebody or like you said yeah he could be like a like a jedi just on a vert in between kind of thing Mm -hmm. yeah i thought it was cool he had like collect he like went around collecting or like trying to defeat other sith and like collecting their lightsabers right their shards and stuff like that yeah yeah Oh yeah, the kyber crystals. <laughs> it was just uh, the style was just different. I know it was definitely really, really different to, to, to see. Really, I can honestly say I, I enjoyed the style and how different it was compared to like the regular anime style that you're used, you usually everybody's used to seeing. So I definitely think that um, they did good on that first step as you go through. So nice, yeah. Overall, like I because I kind of went through and I rated the episodes, so I gave this one a seven out of ten. <laughs> A seven out of ten for the first episode. Yeah, for me, I feel like it might be like a a strong like a strong eight eight and a half like eight point five out of ten for mm-hmm. me. I think it's a strong eight point five. Nice. Okay. So yeah, mine still passed, but like I I think out of all of these, it like it was up there, but it wasn't like my favorite one. Mm-hmm. I know you're uh you're more well versed in Star Wars than I am. Definitely a lot more well versed in Star Wars than I am. So I definitely um can see, but for me, like I. I watched Star Wars, but I don't. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I'm like extreme fan on it. So it's kind of like, um, for my for my take on, it, I definitely feel like it's a it's it's a stronger um, rating 
that's just in my because I'm used to anime stuff so it's like literally right. like I'm like this is beautiful in my eyes kind of thing <laughs> I look right. at the style more than anything else <laughs> yeah I mean it was, it was still cool because like you can kind of tell like I feel like it's more like Star Wars like inspired like it's its own like little pocket universe kind of thing which is cool mm-hmm. all right so moving on to episode two <laughs> honestly I gotta say I wasn't able to write much about this because I was like watching the whole time and I was just like, what am I watching? Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that one. Oh, man. I think that was more towards kids, mm-hmm. if I want to say. Definitely. <laughs> I think that episode was because they were, that's the one, I'm pretty sure that's the episode where they were, um, where their kids were just uh, trying to, they were doing music and stuff like that. Yeah, they were in like a if band. I remember correctly. Yeah, that episode. Yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, the style was 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 cool. It was de- definitely cartoony. I did uh, kind of like the cartoony style, but mm-hmm. I don't know the story wise. It's just like yeah, I wouldn't say it, it didn't have any like depth to me. So it was just more like just kids trying to uh, be a band sort of thing and trying to. Um, but then it's you got so lightsabers easy. in there, so I'm just like, this is all, it's all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the art style, though, I think is what I like I more typically see in the anime world. So but like I feel like this also at least some of the animes I've seen are kind of like this just how they are. They're just kind of like overly like emotional and dramatic, which is how I kind of feel like like how the lines are delivered, which is like kind of how I feel like this episode mm-hmm. was, too. Like, it was like a lot of like emotion were something that like at least I wouldn't think needed all that emotion. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But I think this is a, this episode too is more of a, it's a good thing to watch with the kids in a sense. Mm-hmm. I think that's no, nothing to look too deep into. It's nothing really deep in a sense for people when they're watching it. So I would think it's more like, you know, just aimless, you know, childish kind of fun in a sense to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure kids really enjoyed it. But for me, it was a four out of 10. I didn't, I was, I was yeah. kind of watching it and I was like, okay. <laughs> I definitely feel like it's definitely like underneath the five range. So definitely, I think I agree with you on the four out of ten because mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't as deep as the other ones were. Yeah. Episode three. I liked this one because I like Sith, and these were like created Sith twins, which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. This is also like another style that I usually see, like if I ever like watch anime. I I think I feel like I noticed the names for these characters were more like Japanese and Star Wars names, which is I think like a new thing cuz in the other two episodes I feel like the names were more like Star Wars universe sort of deal. Mm-hmm. And I think the clothing was also anime style just cuz like I out of the things I've seen a lot of like times the um the like females the the female like characters they always have like these like skirts and like long sort of like long sleeve like shirts and stuff like that so those are just something i on like surface level noticed so i'm i'm trying to remember the style and the style is reminding me of a specific anime i'm trying to think um it's not comic got kill it's another one uh see i know what it is it's not if it's not comic got kill it's it's, it's nothing it's another one it's killer kill that's what it reminded me of the animation style reminded me of killer kill that's what when i was watching it um yeah, it definitely reminded me of Kill a Kill, and the only thing that I didn't, I didn't, uh, was confused on in the episode was when they were, uh, they were in space, and they were breathing in space, so I was just like, yeah. this doesn't make sense, I was like, this doesn't make sense, they're fighting in space, and he's breathing in it, just <laughs> darting around, I was like, this isn't, this isn't canon, you're not supposed to breathe in space, I was like, <laughs> every other time, they're wearing a helmet and stuff, but no, they're breathing in space and fighting and like that that doesn't make any sense but other than that though i did like the animation style and the um and the fight scene the fight scene was very intense and colorful for sure i like how colorful it was yeah since you said that actually um i think this episode specifically reminded me of like the whole or at least episode oh god which episode episode eight i don't know if you've seen the sequels but it's like the middle like the middle movie number, like the number two movie of the sequels, um, The Last Jedi. But it like reminded me of like Kylo and like Ray. They're like force pulling the lightsaber in midair, and that's what these twins are doing in the crystals. And like, um, mm-hmm. and like Princess Leia gets thrown into space, and and she's like all crystallized because you're not supposed to breathe in space. <laughs> And so like it's, it's I feel like the whoever like did this story right. Like, so yeah, now I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, so like whoever did this story, I feel like took a lot of inspiration from that movie. 
Um, also, the mm-hmm. final the final battle remi- reminded me a bit of like um, the battle in Avatar: Last Airbender when Aang and Oz- when Aang is like taking away Ozai's power and he shoots up that like beam of energy. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could definitely I could definitely see where you're coming from with that one. I could definitely mm-hmm. see where you're coming from. That's a good comparison. Yeah, that's just like um, what, it remind- what it reminded me. Of. And see, it was anticlimactic, and you know? not anticlimactic, but like um, just being able I, like the swords themselves. The way he had the link that he had the sword, I was just like, is it going to cut her in half or is it going to like, you know, that kind of thing? Or was it going to, um, like, he narrowly, narrowly missed it. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how he did that, but that was, that was good. I won't mm-hmm. lie. That was really, really good. Just, just the, uh, like you said, with the twins part of uh, the comparison between the two, I think honestly that the, uh, that was a good, that was a good, um, play on, um, on, on assist side. I think that was a good play of, of implementing that. Mm-hmm as like an internal conflict between the two so i think that was actually really really good yeah i mean i think out of like out of the previous two episodes i think visually so far this has been like one of my favorite episodes mm-hmm. actually it's my highest so far it's my highest rating one it's an eight out of ten your highest rating one eight out of ten yeah 10? so okay. far <laughs> so, okay, far. so for me it was episode one i would get that rating for twins as i was like a a 7.5 out of 10 okay. and only just because of the fact i mean just because of the realism part of the um the space of the them battling the space battle that's that's the only thing i was getting me for a minute it was the space battle all right that's Other fair, that, they, did, they did a really good job okay episode you- four okay i like this is actually again so far from what we've talked about episode four is also another favorite just because it has like i think really cool fantasy and like supernatural vibe which is like what i'm mm-hmm. into mostly so like and then again i just saw like more anime style clothes for like both male and female uh although this one i feel like this like the way the storyline flowed was a little mm-hmm. bit like it was a little bit confusing to me like i was i was a little bit confused for like the earlier part well what were you uh what were you confused about on so far well with the episode um i just think it was just like how the story was told like i like it just kind of left out like gaps of information to me personally. Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's just like the style of that story. Like I don't watch enough anime to like, you know, really know like, oh, this is a specific way of storytelling versus this is a different way of storytelling. So mm-hmm. I was just saying like most of the animes I've, I've watched, like I've been able to follow the storyline, but like just like a little bit for this one, I was just kind of like, hmm, don't really get it. I think honestly, the uh, this is one of my... Uh, Visually wise, this is one of my favorite episodes just because the highlights and stuff of the character and the um just the coloring. They had a lot of different uh color, like color aspects uh, when it comes to like different scenes. Mm-hmm. And with the um, like I said, with the bride being you know sacrificed to the to the empire, um just to um just to keep the village out of harm's way was was kind of uh was was cool. I mean, I can kind of get the story in a sense just from the little stuff that they gave us, which just means that the empire was just, uh, you know, just trying to um, just ravaging on his, on his little small village in a sense. And then you got all this tension stuff building up with uh, the villagers and how, you know, ever since, and it's, it's not even the empire. I'm sorry. It wasn't the empire. The empire was gone. The rate, they were raiders. If anything, if I remember, they were considered raiders or whatever mm-hmm. um, that reprogrammed the droids and stuff to, uh, to basically just bully this village the whole time. Right. Um, yeah. I want to see what else did I say on here. Just the, uh, I just like I really like the colorful and the highlights on it in general. Like the characters is more more of a style I'm used to. Um, mm-hmm. je- uh, definitely animation, like anime wise, is definitely a style I was more used to. And I just like the highlights. Me, I like if people can highlight characters. I definitely I enjoy the style a lot more because when you try doing characters, then it comes to anime sometimes. You're just sticking with a certain color and that's it. These ones they were like. They would do it one color, but then they would transition it to like a different color. Like, say, for instance, my hair is black. They would do like a um, maybe like a blue outline or something like that. Like little stuff like that is different, mm-hmm. and it's color. It's me. It's colorful because I'm like that means they know how to play with with the color palette a lot more. Like the color palette a lot more right. than uh than other studios, for instance. So they they're more inclined into those. So I think that was honestly one of my favorite ones just because of the color highlights and stuff that they had in it. Nice. And the sword. The sword was different. <laughs> Oh, it, was, it was more like like a samurai sword kind of deal. Yes, it was like a katana type thing. So the sword was definitely a lot different than the yeah. uh, than the other ones, previous ones we saw before. Um, so I definitely liked how they changed the lightsaber slightly a little bit with that. Mm-hmm. That's that's all I had. So 
Yeah, I think I definitely out of all out of all the styles so far, I think this is more like a realistic sort of style with like of, mm. of like animation and like drawing. So I like that too, because like that's more of a style like I can visually sort of like like it visually pulls me in that, that style. Mm -hmm. So I like that a lot. Also, I feel like the whole vibe of this episode, I feel like was about honor. Cause like when that mm -hmm. one character, she like cuts off her hair mm -hmm. and that's the thing, like, I'm going to go back to Avatar Last Airbender cause it's one of my favorite like TV shows. But like when uh, Iroh and Zuko, they're like on the run and they cut off their ponytail basically. I think even, like, I'm not an expert, but I think even in like ancient, like Japanese, uh, like history, like, or storytelling, it's like, if you cut off your mm -hmm. hair, it's like sort of like starting over, like you're a new person kind of thing. Right. Right. No, I could definitely, I could definitely agree with you on that one. Mm -hmm. I can so, agree with you on that. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone correct me, but that, that's what I think. No, I, I honestly think you're right on that one. Cause it's definitely like a, like a fret, like you said, like a fresh start. Mm -hmm. My rating out of that episode was what was, I was definitely giving like a, like a nine out of 10 on that one for me, just cause of the style. I really liked the style on that episode. That was mine too. Like I, I gave it a nine out of 10. Oh, look at that. We're, good. Yeah, we're, we're, good it. we're in sync. <laughs> yeah. Visions is so good so far. Like, I, want, I hope they come up with more like this. Mm -hmm. I Different think this may films. have been a one time thing, but I think if it gets like a lot of popularity, they might do it again. Mm -hmm. Like a test run to see, because this is their first ever, they're trying to do anime style Star Wars. This is their first ever idea for it. So that's actually pretty good. I would like them to make a series like this. I mean, mm -hmm. you know how they always done like the Clone Wars and stuff like that, but I would like them to make a, an anime series, but they do a lot of world building and stuff like that. I would want them to do something like that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these short stories, like I would personally like to have like, you know, an expansion on it. So, mm -hmm. so it'd be cool if they did that. Episode five. I... Mm -hmm thought this one was very interesting because not only do I like Sith but I also like the concept of like lightsabers like I just think it's so fascinating and this episode was like mm -hmm. it, it I just feel like it took a very interesting take on lightsaber building and how like a lightsaber is basically like, it's like a sacred weapon like you like the like when you are like a young force user you actually like you go out and you get your own kyber crystal and like you get a connection with it through the force and like you build your own lightsaber through the force so to see like someone sort of like like product line kind of manufacturing these lightsabers to respond mm -hmm. to like different force users in a certain way i just thought was like really interesting and kind of like blew my mind in a way i can agree on that the um i really like that because of the fact of like they're like he's he exploring the guy was like explaining it the sort of towards smith was explaining it he was like yeah these react based off of whatever the uh whatever the person whoever's wielding it basically on that on that lightsaber whether it be if they're bad they're good if they're um you know so for when they actually all received the lightsabers it definitely like completely threw me back because all of them started turning red and i was yeah. just like what i was like what's <laughs> going on i was like wait a minute i thought y'all were jedi <laughs> i know i was like what's <laughs> what going on <laughs> Like, oh my god i was like wait so i was like, the guy i was like i understood the good the guy the little boy was was blues so i was just like okay he's cool but everybody else just started turning red i was just like wow and what was weird well i guess the only weird part I, well not really i wouldn't say it was weird more like he had a change of heart so his lightsaber changed color over time after he was like because his was initially red the, yeah uh whatever the guy the guy's name was his name was was his was initially red but then he was just like hey bro stop he's like he's like it's it's over <laughs> he's like it's like, okay you're right the yeah. the darkness was almost getting me for a second and then it changed so i think what color was it? i think it was purple yeah it changed back it, to uh, purple yeah so yeah that i like that though and just the fact that the, the girl itself uh when she was um the daughter mm -hmm. um when she was um trying to transport the uh the lightsabers to them and just her being like being that well versed in the force in general like being able to uh fend off her attacker and continue moving mm -hmm. i think that was really really i think that was one that i think i really liked that that chase scene that chase scene was really really good though oh like over the ice and, and stuff. because she was legit turned around and fighting while not <laughs> even looking while, exactly exactly while the, the thing was still going and dodging trees and stuff like any other <laughs> average person would have crashed for sure mm -hmm. but 
but I think I like that one. That was one of my, that was definitely another good episode. I, I agree. That, I agree. I like that yeah. episode a lot. I think this was like the most intense episode with, cause it just had something like twists and turns. Like you said, like having like, they ignite their lightsabers and it's all red and you're like, what? <laughs> That's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> exactly i'm just like i thought y'all was supposed to be the good guys y'all were yeah. lying to me this entire time i thought they were like where is he at <laughs> but no uh, i i was skeptical i won't lie they did good on that storytelling because i was skeptical of the guy at first when he summoned all of them i was like yeah this guy's kind of shady i was like this guy's kind of a little shady but no it turns out he was a good guy and then everybody else was screaming it was bad i was like yeah so yeah sorry that- spoilers <laughs> but oh yeah and then you have that like one confused guy who was bad but then just kind of he got consumed by the dark side mm-hmm. briefly and then and exactly. then when they were defeated, he exactly. like went back. But yeah, this episode was also a nine out of ten. I enjoyed the storyline and I, the animation. I think style. I can agree with you on that one. Nine out of ten for me too. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything to say on the the like art style? Like did anything pop out to you? Or was it just kind of like the same as the other ones? Um uh, yeah, I feel like it was kind of like the same as the other ones. I think the uh art style was still it was still good and everything it wasn't mm-hmm. a bad art style now six on the other hand I don't, <laughs> it's kind of weird <laughs> but we'll go well i'll let you take over for that first before I um i thought episode six was also a little bit weird just because like the robot didn't really follow any like logical rules mm-hmm. like he is a robot but he can do human things but he isn't human like it's okay so like in star wars like robots like they have like human emotions basically like they're sarcastic like they can you know express sadness and humor and whatever so like that's not like really a problem um it's just that like some like like the rules of like what a human can do and can't do was kind of blurred between like this robot and what like robots can and can't do as well if that makes sense mm-hmm no, also, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, this art style, like, it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> I don't think it was my favorite year, honestly. It's it's more, like I said, it's more, I would say, geared towards kids, like, kids in the sense, too, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, with the, uh, everything was moving kind of fast. But not only that, but the, uh, like you said, with the robot, the robot part was kind of weird. Just uh, him dreaming about being a Jedi and stuff like that. And just this random a uh, random Sith person just standing outside, just standing basically outside of the uh, the the, earth, the little uh, planet, waiting for a signal. It was just kind of like it was kind of inter- like really weird though, honestly. And I don't know. I could just say the episode itself was weird to me. I think it was just really weird. Yeah. And like you said, expressions and stuff like that because droids having that type of expression and you know, with being able to cry and stuff like that. But the best though was one of their. I would say be on the lower end for me when it comes with the. Um, what I what I would say it is on the lower end. Yeah, I, I put that in my notes too. I was like, I don't think robots can cry and blush, and also I don't think robots can actually use the force because I think you have to be like living to do that. So like, mm-hmm. like exactly. the, the storyline exactly. was like okay for me. Like I didn't really have like too much of an issue with it, um, but like like the robot part was just weird. So I gave this a six out of ten. I would have gave for me. I would have gave it like a like a five out of ten. Like. Definitely like a five out of ten. Okay, so you really didn't like it. <laughs> no, I it was it wasn't my favorite for sure. It was definitely not my favorite. Yeah, the it threw me off at the first beginning part of it. Looking at it, I was just like, "What is going on?" I said, "What is this?" But right. otherwise, <laughs> I mean, the only thing that brought it up to me was like better better for me was just like I guess the fight scene at the end where he was um when he went to that little robotic uh not transformation but more like that that combination thing and then mm-hmm. into finally beating him. That right. last scene was intense and it was good, but everything else, started, I was like, no. Mm-hmm. Mm. I liked how they like, because they have like a science aspect with it. So they like brought a planet back to life, which I feel like is a cool concept. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like if, if they had to expand anything in this, I'd actually want it to focus more on like that whole process than a robot wanting to be um, a Jedi. Uh, a Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Right, so more like the planet coming back kind of thing versus like, mm-hmm. yeah. Because there, there are concepts in Star Wars of like, you know, killing a planet like we see a lot of times that like the Empire would like, you know, ravage a planet and like deplete it of like everything. For resources. Yeah, mm-hmm. so like seeing a planet come back to life, I feel like is not something that has been shown or told often. So that's something I would have mm-hmm. liked to actually have uh, 
like have seen more of this episode. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely feel like that would be a lot more interesting than the than the robot going mm -hmm. across the galaxy being a Jedi. <laughs> yeah, because it, it also wasn't clear that like that's what like the old man was trying to do in the beginning is bring life back to the planet. Right. It, it was definitely not clear until until he pretty much died. It was never clear. Yeah. Until then, because he kind of just the robot just came out of nowhere. I mean, he made the robot. I guess he wanted. I don't know. It was <laughs> all over the place. All right. Episode seven was also up there for me. The, I, I liked the art style a lot for episode seven. It was super creepy, and that's and I, that's kind of what I liked about it. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about because the old man or it's always super creepy. Yeah, he he creeped he creeped me out. I was like, like his eyes, he and he's like soulless. Yeah, and he moved like kind of like like an insect, kind of like very twitchy, you know. Mm -hmm. And like that's like what like my top horror things are things that like move weirdly, make like weird noises, and I feel like he just did all all of those. And I was like, okay, <laughs> would not want to fight him. Not at I did, all. especially yeah, not at all. Okay, sorry. I was just I just had a question actually. Um in most that. in most like anime shows, like do they do they have like catchphrases that they kind of just like repeat all the time? Mm, yes, they do. A uh, good bit of shows they do. Um it's something that does it's it's pertaining really to the character. Some characters will have specific catchphrases than others. So okay. it depends on what the show you're watching. If you're watching like a, let's say for instance, like a, um, a show, like I'm trying to an example. Fairy tale is a good example. If everybody knows fairy tale, uh, Natsu has his, uh, his saying where he's like, I'm all fired up. Like every, like he says that after like every other fight or so. Mm -hmm. He'll say that and like before he gets like into a fight, he'll just like, I'm all fired up. But <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they definitely, uh, they, a lot of animes do have like particular like uh, sayings for a specific character or something like that. Uh, okay. But it's not just, it's, it's just something that's built on the character, really. Okay, because that's just something I did notice. But I do, I see, I, I think I know what you're talking about, that when they were saying, um, they do, they did reference a lot saying there's, there's a disturbance in the force, and they, I know they were saying that, like, a lot with every episode kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just something that's typical, though, of, uh, of Star Wars, I would say. So that's definitely, I think, you know, that's something Star Wars related. So I definitely think that's what Star Wars uses a lot. So that would be. That makes sense, though. I, I see what you're mm -hmm. saying, though. Yeah, one one phrase that I know they like it's like a popular one in Star Wars, but they used it in like every single episode of this series was um, "I've got a bad feeling about this." Like it was literally said in every single episode. So I feel like you're Lucas right. Fil Lucas Films was like, "You can do this, but you have to include this line in your story." <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. Like, right, right. They, they, I do. I could definitely remember every episode saying something like saying that mm -hmm. i could definitely i definitely remember that yeah so i feel like this like i feel like this episode another reason why i liked it is because it was like super psychological in a way like mm -hmm. it was like if i had to classify it as like kind of a horror genre i'd probably do more of like a psychological horror psychological yeah and like uh, because the, uh, what would be uh your reasoning i mean other than the uh, i know the old man and stuff like that what would be uh your reasoning on with it being psychological well, just that, like, the way that the battle was kind of fought, like, it was more, I thought was, like, a samurai duel, kind of, and, like, I just feel like, you know, you had to kind of use your head to, like, get through the battle, or the, the mm -hmm. Jedi had to use his head to get through the battle. That's true, that's true. The old man was kind of, was kind of, I think his swords were, at first, I thought they were daggers. I thought they were just, like, dagger lightsabers for a second, but when they showed it, it was, like, basically just dual sorting it. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been cool, though, they gave him, like, like small like daggers of lightsabers instead of like actual like two long swords it, i think it definitely would have been a bit easier for him in a sense i guess you mm -hmm. could say for his character yeah because wielding two swords and you're that old in a sense is not it's not going to be it's not a good time especially when you lose one he was he was ready to uh switch to the uh to the lightning thing yeah immediately afterwards so i was like i guess that makes sense because that's that's more of a sith thing but mm -hmm. But the, uh, still, though, I think, yeah, the old man was definitely creepy. He was very, very creepy. Now, yeah. I was glad that the Padawan didn't die. I was definitely glad that the, that the Padawan guy didn't die because I'd be upset. I was like, dang. Yeah, I was, I was like, be upset yeah. too. I was like, not him. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I gave I like this it. one an eight out, out of 10, actually. Like, I, I enjoyed eight it. Eight out of 10? Mm -hmm. I give it a, uh, um, 
I'm gonna agree with you on eight out of ten. I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Eight out of ten. I know I've been agreeing with you majority of the time on all this, but you, but your your ratings have been pretty spot like spot on. So I've been I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I was like, this art style is what I've seen a couple times. It's like when like you're close, like when it's close up, it's like a lot of detail. But then like when the the camera like pans out, it's like less detailed. Like there's less movement. It's more like like when like when they're walking, they're like. Mm-hmm. you know it's, not, it's, it's like it's like smooth it's like it's kind of smooth in a sense yeah so I, th- I thought that was funny <laughs> so we on we're almost done already so yeah episode, episode eight, eight. <laughs> this one i thought was kind of interesting i feel like this style is actually probably like i'm not sure but i feel like it's more of like specific because it like it's like an animal human sort of deal like a hybrid kind of thing yeah. animal emotion i mean animal you know animal um animal human. people kind of thing yeah animal like a beast skin like a beast human type thing yeah with emotions and being adopted and stuff like that so because mm-hmm. like you know um star wars is you know they have all these different aliens but i don't think i've ever seen a bunny species so i think that might actually be taken from like an anime style like directly yeah yeah i definitely could see that because um some animes are like because animes like that people can like they shy away from depending on certain like what what they're watching because they consider it's another word for anime things they, they consider it furry I guess you could say in a sense yeah um but and there's usually a negative aspect with 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 the word furry though um but I think it was de- I definitely for, for like the the storyline pro- like perspective I think it was really really good just the uh, mm-hmm. person just her being adopted into a family. Uh, not having anywhere to go and then you know being loved by both the daughter and the father over time and growing up with them so you grew that attachment with the family and actually um was more felt like you know she wasn't um like she felt like more of a fa- like a more of a family member than than, than i've actually like i would expect it honestly yeah and i'll let you explain it but just when the sister um was being you know going it's going towards the empire kind of thing because she felt like what she was doing was right when it turns out it wasn't right but mm-hmm. you know yeah so like basically like you do the the right thing for the wrong reason or like the wrong thing for the right reason or whatever any any exactly. combination of those <laughs> um exactly. but like i don't know if you've watched the dark crystal on netflix i recommend it if you haven't um it's really I good i did not but i'll have to put it on my list yeah but uh, there's crystal. yeah but there's this um this is one character just kind of similar to the daughter where like she kind of goes to the dark side because like she thinks that way is the correct way to like proceed and stuff like that and mm-hmm. yeah and so I just like that reminded me a lot of that and I was like girl no don't do that listen to your father <laughs> I'm like why don't why you look at the guy does the, does the guy not look shady to you <laughs> like, I know like his he looks haircut. real shady I'm not gonna lie <laughs> right um, his condescending tone i was like yeah, he's definitely shady i was like, i don't know why you're going to, you're going through with this but mm-hmm. it seems like he would definitely do you dirty at the end of the day so i was like yeah i don't know yeah. why she didn't see that but yeah i mean like but after i got over that like the, the bunny hybrid style like i i think i think the episode was pretty good i feel like this episode in particular had a nice balance between like anime japanese culture and star wars mm-hmm Cause like the buildings, you know, like um, I guess he's like a gang leader or some something something like some sort of leader of like a group. So like his house was yeah. like like what I normally see in like Japanese movies or TV shows is like that sort of house, mm-hmm. uh, especially like like older older movies. Yeah, because he was he was real emphasis on like honor and stuff like that too. Though like he mm-hmm. really wanted to protect the place in his own way, and like right. yeah, the style of his building was more like a um was similar to like a um. Yeah, like an old, like an old Japanese uh, style castle in a sense. It's more like a castle. Yeah, like a palace me, or something. Sense. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I think, like, I think they had cherry blossoms in this episode. I, if it's not, if it's not this episode, they had cherry blossoms in another episode. But like, that's like an important like tree in Japanese culture. So like, and just like the, I think there is, I forgot which scene it was, but it's it's done in like a Japanese art style. I think where it shows like. Um, like paper cutouts kind of and like there's like movement with the paper cutouts if i'm remembering correctly oh yeah yeah yeah. when he was uh when he was transferring the uh wasn't he transferring the sword to her i think that's when he was doing that yeah and it's like yeah it's like a flash like a flashback sort of 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I thought I thought that was cool that this episode incorporated that. I thought we were actually we would actually see like more of that in um in the past episodes. So I just kind of like that they introduced that in here. I definitely I definitely liked it. I liked it. I liked the whole episode of stuff in general. When you get past the the, the like I said, like you said, the human uh <laughs> animal part, like furry part, you're good though, pretty much. Yeah. Like people you gotta look past it into like a actual story aspect, not into like actual like sometimes visual all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, I mean, it was cool that they um, put it in there because I feel like the furry community, like if, it, I don't know if this was supposed to represent the furry community or not, but if it was, or if someone who is a furry identified with that, then like, I feel like that's kind of cool because I feel like they're kind of underrepresented in uh, media. Exactly, exactly. Because not, like I said, yeah, definitely. Because it, it could definitely remind me, like, I wouldn't say like Beastars because Beastars is a good show to watch if um, we look past the, uh, the animal aspect. Because mm-hmm. um, it was honestly a show that grew up, that grew on me. So I definitely think that with them doing this type of episode and like adhering to that sort of that sort of community, that they definitely, um, they definitely did a good job though with it. Honestly, mm-hmm. and you haven't seen B Stars, I highly recommend it. It's definitely <laughs> a good show to watch. It's on Netflix. So. Okay, I'll put it on my ever growing list. <laughs> All right, um, good, good, good. Yeah, so I gave this one a seven out of ten. Like it was, like I thought it was pretty good. Um, but just like the beginning kind of threw me off. Like this little bunny is like a slave, which like really kind of disturbed me. So it's like seven out of 10. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit disturbing with that part. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, nice. nice. 7.5 out of 10. So we're now on the final episode. This episode was whack. <laughs> it was whack for me. Look at me. Like the storyline is like, it's kind of one we've seen a lot. Like, like it, it's basically the whole prequels, at least for me, is that like this, this guy has some sort of feeling romantic or platonic for this girl. And in order to try and mm-hmm. save her, he does like everything he can to save her, which is like literally why Anakin turned to the dark side because he thought he could save Padme. And then turns out mm-hmm. he's the one who actually killed her. So like, I was like, okay, like we've seen this story before, you know? Right, so. I think they definitely, definitely use that a lot. Probably that's probably where they got their idea from. We're, we're making this a tragic episode of the mm-hmm. Jedi transitioning into the into a Sith, just because that's something we normally see in Star Wars sometimes too. With like I said, with Anakin and stuff like that. Um, the style itself was very simple. Um, it wasn't as good as the rest of the other I would say styles. I think the rest of the other styles that we've seen from Episode One to Eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly think this was like to be honest, like the worst style that I've seen. Okay. I was gonna say I just I just don't like the style in itself in general. It was it was very simplistic and um it's kind of underwhelming to see that episode nine after seeing all those other episodes beforehand and you, you just get to episode nine you're just like what happened to the budget <laughs> like like what kind <laughs> right. of like like what happened to the budget kind of thing right like, you give us all these other good looking styles and then you got this simplistic like yeah it's okay I mean mm-hmm. it's, it, it's watchable that's all I can say other than that but yeah, yeah. to me to me it was like. I don't know if this was the right word, but it was like, I get what you, I get what you kind of are saying about the style. Like it, to me, it was like choppy, like blurry, like visually, like it felt weird to look at. Right. And I could say that if it, this is from a studio though, I would think that they would do a little bit better on it, especially if it's a studio, which means that there, I know there's multiple artists and stuff like that. And I know sometimes Japanese studios in general have like, they don't have as many artists and stuff when it comes to doing like certain scenes and stuff like that. So some things look weirder than others. Mm-hmm. But just to have the whole episode be like that in a sense, and I think it was like 15, 15 minutes, maybe. Probably around that time. With, exactly. But give us that with the span of like 15 minutes. It's just like, you know, why you, they could have did something else. So they could have at least up the style, like up the style a bit more, mm-hmm. I would think. And it, this is a studio working on. It's like, it seems like something I would say a, like a, like a new coming animator would be starting in a sense. Like this is a newcomer animator kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just to me though. Uh, I also, I feel like the storyline like was also again, like missing some information. Like mm-hmm. who, who was this big bad person? Like obviously they took over this, this girl's like, like inherited palace or something. Like, like they kill her family or something. I think she was her sister. Uh, was it, I'm not sure if it was adopted sister or actual sister or something like that. I think they, they said the word sister in there somewhere. I think. Okay. From what I remember. I think there's something like that, but she's like, she was plotting for a while. So I would think it's something that family related. So it's definitely probably like a sister or something like that, I guess. 
Okay, see that one. Kind of that, like, I was like, what's going on with this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that went over right. That went up over my head. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. And then it was like yeah. a weird. I don't know. Like, it, this episode was just really weird to me. Like I said, like this episode was like whack. It was very like, like the story was like jerky. Like you're going from this, and it's like oh, and then you're going to that, and then you're going to this, and then it's over, and it's like okay <laughs> cool I completely, like, completely agree yeah so like they could they could have did a lot better with this mm-hmm. yeah six out of ten for me honestly i would give it i would give it like a four out of ten okay so it's you one, it's one of my lowest it's one of my lowest a lower lowest episode honestly for me just because okay, yeah. of the style and stuff like that like so the style for me was just not not it mm-hmm. and i've seen like all the other episodes were a lot better, I would say, in style comparison to this one as the last episode. I would I would want to put this as the last episode. If anything, I would rather put this episode in the middle somewhere rather than the last be the last episode in a sense. You're right. Yeah. I'm trying to find I'm trying trying to see if I can find the studios that that did, did the uh Star Wars. Yeah. Wars. I know there Let's there see. were seven of them. So I feel like but there are nine episodes. So I feel like some, like someone had to do like two episodes. Who did they use? Oh, here we go. I got the studios now. Let me see. Okay. Oh, that's why the twins was so good. Let me see. Cause Trigger <laughs> was definitely, Trigger was definitely really, really, it's a really, really good studio. They done. Um, yes. So <laughs> I was on a target. I was right. I was like, okay. So the studio Trigger did the, did, did the twins episode. That's why I say it looked like Kill or Kill. Cause they look exactly like it. Yes, and Darling in the France. So yeah, I was on target on that one. Nice, nice. <laughs> so they did uh, episode two and episode seven. That's why we liked it so much. Okay. Uh, so, they did both of those episodes. So triggers the studio to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, but sci- so the episodes that we disliked a lot was the uh, the last one, nine and six. Mm-hmm. That was basically Science Saru. That's the name of the, uh, the studio um, that did both the robot one and the uh and the simple like the simplistic style that they did for the last episode no i'm I'm surprised certain studios got to do two because like i'm sure there are a lot more than just seven you know anime studios in japan so Mm -hmm. they um one two three four five yeah you're right it was seven studios but i think i guess the ones that worked on two were the ones that they uh that I think people will uh, will like the best. So Trigger is a very very popular um is a very popular studio. So that's probably what I gave them to. True. To work on instead of um and gave, I don't know why they gave Science Saru to though. Overall, this is I would say is uh, nothing world building or anything like that. But uh, so I was just saying that like that's something I also noticed that like um, the storylines are at least like Jedi and Sith men more Jedi and like in recent Star Wars like a lot of the story focus has been like not you know jedi or force like related so Mm -hmm. i feel like it would have been interesting like i like the stories for the most part for this uh series but i thought it'd be like interesting if they also try to focus a little bit more on like you know a little bit more of like the world aspect like we're like we're all building in this that's right yeah and like other other like you know other aspects of star wars instead of just like the force aspect Mm mm-hmm like, because I, I think I think you, uh, a lot of Star Wars fans give it a harsh critique, and that's not that's not only it's not it's not a bad critique, it's a good critique because you guys are like I said, you guys are all everybody's star like you guys are more into Star Wars than most like, other people are, mm-hmm. and just the fact of um like I said, just the fact of just taking um whatever it is that they gave us in a sense and what you y'all are used to, which is all the world building and stuff like that. That's kind of like it's underwhelming for you guys, I would say. Just to, uh, just to um, just to see strictly just because I have another friend too. He's uh, he loves Star Wars. Um, mm-hmm. He taught he we talked about it a little bit. And he was just like he's like yeah. He's I didn't think it was the best kind of thing. He's like from what I'm used to, and he's like a master Star Wars fan. Like he has like every game I think possible uh, of all Star Wars. So he's like into it. Mm-hmm. But he's just like yeah, this is underwhelming. That was just strictly just talking about Jedi's and Sith, and that was it. There was nothing else on there, like nothing else that they were really talking about. So. Is that if it's somebody that's not into Star Wars or watches it a little bit, it'll be good for them. I was just saying, like, I don't think it's supposed to be viewed as like a typical Star Wars like short film or mm-hmm. anything. Like, I definitely think this is more for um, anime fans and sort of like introducing 
Star Wars fans to like, you know, the aspect and style of anime. Mm -hmm. So, but like, I, like, I wasn't trying to look at it as like, an, like a regular Star Wars, like something I would think is like a regular Star Wars, uh, like movie or TV show or something or story. Um, but I just thought, like, right. I thought it was really interesting to have like someone else's culture and like how, how like a different culture actually views and like puts their own spin on like a well-known global franchise. So like, I like that actually a lot. And like, if they did other cultural like stories on Star Wars, like I think it'd be cool to like see those as well. I think so too. I think they did a really good job though with um, even if this is their first, like their, this is the, you gotta think about it too. It's their, it's their first take on doing an animated, like an animation, like kind of thing with Star Wars other than like, you know, Clone Wars and stuff like that, but the actual anime style, this is their first take on it. So. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, they do do something like like something either like a whole series or something about it, uh, or even if they do like a Visions Part Two or something like that, maybe they might get certain like different studios or something like that to work on it too. Maybe they might take the same ones that people like they people rated it like the rated the episodes. They're like, okay, we'll stick with this studio and we'll uh, we'll try another maybe another set of different studios and try to do different episodes with them. Right. then I think that I think they could definitely build off of this as well though I really think that they can do that mm -hmm. yeah because like I said earlier like there are some episodes that like I would actually like to have you know a bit more on right like it would be like a part two or something like that I think that would be kind of cool to see yeah because also like I think the timeline that most of these stories are set in is like after the empire like was defeated and like until mm -hmm. recent until recently like there hasn't really been a lot of like stories uh surrounding that time period so like you have a lot of like room to work so i feel like it'd be kind of cool exactly exactly because like after the uh you know jedi order and everything like that so yeah a lot of it was afterwards so mm -hmm. yeah so that is all i really had to say is there anything else you wanted to throw in um not really much else i could really say i just uh like i said i do like the emerging star wars and anime together i think it was a good idea and i think mm -hmm. that they, i just hope to see more of it hopefully i hope to see more hopefully <laughs> that's all i really have to say well guys that has been our review and anime talk on star wars visions thank you for joining me chris and your insight on art Anytime. styles if you guys want to check him out on instagram his handle is uh grace underscore art on instagram nice you can check it out here or go into the description and follow the link i will post well guys thank you for that. having me of course thank you for coming well, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.